All set to go. This is for the 12 round WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. This is the 130 pound limit. The 10 point must scoring system will be in effect. The three knockdown rule uh, will be. Uh, well, actually, there is no three knockdown rule in the WBC, so forget about whether it's an effect or not effect. The three knockdown rule doesn't exist in the WBC. A fighter must get up following a low blow or he may be counted out, and it's the referee's discretion as to how long a rest period a fighter that's been hit by a low blow has. There's a mandatory eight count following knockdowns. There's no standing eight counts unless the fellow's caught up in the ropes, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round where the bell signifies the end of the match. We'll talk about headbutts and things like that should they occur during the course of the fight. This is round number one, scheduled for 12. I'm Bob Sheridan on the Don King Sports and Entertainment Network, and we're coming to you live from the Hilton Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. The man in the uh, trunk, uh, in the trunks, uh, well, with the uh, polka dots all over them, I suppose they're not uh, really polka dots, but they're uh, spots, they're ti tiger or leopard spots. And uh, the other fellow is Mario Martinez, the challenger in the dark blue or black trunks they look uh, on the television monitors with a gold trim. Mario Martinez and Azuma Nelson fought one time before. That fight went 12 rounds. Uh, at that time, Azuma Nelson had a lot of personal problems in his life, uh, but was able to come out uh, with the championship. Azuma also was the former WBC featherweight champion. He won the Super Featherweight uh, Championship title from Mario Martinez in February of 88, just about a year ago. Both guys getting their licks in here in round number one. Zuma trying to pick up the pace, and Mario's not afraid of him at all as he attacks him. This is just round one. You see there's just about a minute to go in the round and a lot of action here so far. Obviously, Azuma Nelson proud of the fact he's from Africa with the leopard colored trunks, leopard shoes, leopard socks, and he had a leopard robe coming into the ring. Again, the big one coming up, Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno. The heavyweight championship of the world on the line. Betting out here in Las Vegas, Nevada heavily favors Mike Tyson, but when you get guys this size, we all know anything can happen. Mike, of course, a strong favorite to retain his championship, but with the enthusiasm of the British people that are here in Las Vegas, you wouldn't know that. It all adds to the excitement of a championship boxing night, and you folks will all see it. Coming up to the closing 10 seconds of round number one. And at stake here, the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. As we go to the corner with the Zuma Nelson, we'll tell you a little about that 130 pound uh, classification. They have guys like uh, Brian Mitchell in it, Tony Lopez, Rocky Lockwood. Well, you take Mario Martinez, no, okay. Uh, okay. the challenger tonight, who's ranked uh, fourth in the world. As you take a look at some of the shots here exchanged by both fighters, Mario scoring a low blow there, pushes off the fellow from Ghana. And Azuma Nelson able to score a right hand here. But you see Martinez answering right back with a right hand of his own. Shot to the body. Other guys in this uh, weight classification, Barry McGuigan, Juan Laporte, Harold Knight, Lupe Suarez, Juan Molina. So it's a pretty good division. The junior lightweights or super featherweights is what the WBC calls. And that's what's on the line tonight. The super featherweight championship of the world. Azuma Nelson. And the leopard skin. And the man in the black trunks is Mario Martinez. Again, the last time they fought, it went a full 12 rounds. And you can see both of these guys world-class fighters. Martinez is only 23 years old, and he has already a master record of 47 wins, only four losses. He's ranked number one by the WBC. That's why he's getting a shot at this title. And Azuma, of course, you know his background. 
The only loss in his career was when he was knocked out by the late Salvador Sanchez in New York in 1982. That was for the WBC featherweight title. Inside of two minutes to go, and this is the second round. First round was fairly even, maybe a slight uh, favorite uh, to Azuma Nelson, but Nelson seems to be taking more command here in round two. When Azuma scores, uh, Mario Martinez is right back at him, I will say that. Eddie Mafus told me that uh, Azuma Nelson uh, was in uh, fantastic shape for this fight, both mentally and physically. And he's right in the prime of his, of his career at age 27. So this little super featherweight in at 129 pounds wants to take out Mario Martinez and really prove his dominance as the super featherweight champion of the world. is not afraid to bore in and force the fight. Again, this is uh, round two, and again, it's scheduled for 12 rounds. You see the referee, Carlos Padilla, warn both fighters about watching their heads. And their heads come together in the WBC. of a headbutt inside of six rounds is declared a technical draw. And the champion in that case would retain his title. After six rounds, a man ahead on points wins. Unless uh, the referee, of course, feels that the fault was intentional. I mention that because the heads are coming together here occasionally. All right, we're in the corner with Mario Martinez. Let's uh, see if we can hear what this is. Respirando fuerte. Respirando. Respirando. Tell him to watch the head. Watch. Dice que cuidado con las cabezas. Un poquito de agua, Sebastián. Watching the head. I scored the first round even and the second round just slightly in favor of Azuma Nelson. So very even fight here as we get ready to go to the third round. Let's go. Stay there. Let's go. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Stay there. Stay there. All right, here we go. Round number three. Again, this is scheduled for 12 rounds. Super featherweight title on the line. This is the 130-pound limit. Both of these fighters came in at 129. Both of them are exactly the same height at 5'6". Azuma Nelson is 27 years old, and Mario Martinez is 23. But Martinez has something over 50 fights, and Azuma Nelson has, is just at his 31st fight. However, Azuma Nelson has won 29 of those fights. Mario Martinez has won 47, lost four, and had a couple of draws. Martinez fought twice in 88, that February fight about a year ago against Azuma Nelson. That was for, of course, the super featherweight title. That was one of his losses. His other losses, in fact, three of the four losses that uh, Mario Martinez has, proving that he is a world-class fighter, uh, have been to world champions. The time he lost to Azuma Nelson, the fight to Roger Mayweather, and he lost to Julio Cesar Chavez, who, pound for pound, many people think is the greatest fighter in the world today. Some Mike Tyson fans might disagree with that, but certainly Julio Cesar Chavez, one of the great young talents in, in boxing today. So Mario Martinez has had a pretty darn good career, being the three of the four losses were to champions, and the other loss that's on his record, I think it was way back in, oh, way back in his career anyhow. I think it was in around 1981 when he lost to Rosendo Alonso, and that was down in Guadalajara. Let's go! 
the opponent with coming up to just the, the one minute mark remaining in round number three. Azuma Nelson and Mario Martinez. Kind of a coasting ground it appears for both fighters here. Of course it uh, appears to be more of a coasting round when you're watching and describing the action than when you're in there. Because some of these shots are landing. It's a pretty good round for Mario Martinez. Zuma's uh, jab is nowhere near as crisp right now as Martinez appears to be. trying to steal this round away from Mario Martinez and thus far with the exception of the last about 15 seconds of this round uh, the, the round was going to be given to Mario Martinez and now Azuma Nelson appears to be stealing the round from him all right the bell ends round three and that's probably what happened on the judges scorecards here Mario Martinez was actually doing more in the round and then towards the last 30 seconds of round number three Azuma Nelson came on and you probably will end up having to give that round to Azuma Nelson when Mario Martinez probably should get the round. This is a difficult fight to score by the way. Very difficult thus far. Zuma Nelson. Okay, okay. He won the super featherweight title in December of okay, 1984 when he defeated Wilfredo Gomez. The fight that was down in San Juan that ended in a knockout in the uh, tenth round in that fight. Oh, actually, it was the eleventh round knockout in that fight. And uh, what a fight that was! All right, here we go. This is round four. Bob Sheridan here on the Mike Tyson Network. How about that? The heavyweight champ has now got his own network. This fight is being produced uh, by Mike Tyson, Inc. in association with the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel. And we're very glad to be here at the Hilton Hotel where John Giovinco and Tom Willer and the entire staff here take great care of, of us while we're here. And, and more important, they take great care of the boxers and Really, the Hilton Hotel in Las Vegas has become the boxing mecca now. Some people over at Caesars might disagree, but with the number of title fights that they've had here at the Hilton Hotel, I think John Giovinco and Baron Hilton Company deserve a lot of credit because it's really added a lot to the sport and it's added a lot to the Hilton, I'm sure. The city of Las Vegas is a great spot for fights. Carlos Padilla very quickly to break it up. You know, that looked better. The crowd kind of booed a little bit at that, but uh, there was nothing heavy really landing in that. And as I mentioned, uh, in between the third and fourth round, a difficult fight to score, and very difficult it is. Nobody really taking command in this fight. Nelson, the more highly publicized fighter, than is Mario Martinez, but Martinez is certainly looking to be a most worthy opponent here this evening. Native of Guadalajara, Mexico, and I know a lot of people down in Mexico watching this fight, and a lot of Mexican people up here for the fight. Most notably from Mexico City, the President of the World Boxing Council, Jose Suleiman, looking on at ringside. Immediately as Azuma Nelson went to put that elbow to the back of the neck of Mario Martinez, Carlos Padilla stepped right in and stopped him. 
They really have some of the finest referees in the world working here in the Nevada State Athletic Commission. You probably heard me mention it on another telecast, but guys like Carlos Padilla, who's working this fight, Mills Lane, another one of the great ones from uh, Reno, who will be working fights before the evening's over. And, of course, uh, Richard Steele, who will be working the Tyson-Bruno fight. Uh, all just really, really good referees. And I think uh, Fight has really got a good shot as the bell ends round number four. To get a, a fair shot while he's in the in the ring when you have uh, have the control of the bout in such able hands as some of these fine referees here uh, with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. All right, so round four is history. Nothing uh, to write home about. Nothing too exciting. I've got the fight scored unofficially 40-38 in favor of Azuma Nelson. But uh, depending on where you're sitting in this particular ring, you could have the fight scored uh, dead even, or you might have the fight even the other way. I'm not uh, really giving you much of an indication of how this fight's going because it's so it's so close and it's so subjective as to how you can uh, score this fight uh, in the opinions of the different uh, judges that uh, the fight's very, very close. Let's suffice it to say that. This is round five. I'm Bob Sheridan on the Mike Tyson Network. Glad that you can be with us. And we do have, speaking of Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno for the World Undisputed Heavyweight Championship coming up. And as you see on the screen, this is the 12-round WBC Super Featherweight Championship. That's the 130-pound classification. And the principal's in the ring. And the loincloth, I suppose you'd call it, Azuma Nelson and Mario Martinez in the black trunks. Nelson trying to get through with a jab. Martinez doing a nice job bending it off and then uh, countering with it. Azuma Nelson has very, very fast hands. He holds them high, doesn't take too much. Neither fighter has been down. Neither fighter visibly shaken. Nobody hurt in the fight so far. Doesn't appear to be any puffiness or redness around the eyes of uh, either fighter. The only way a judge can, uh, can take a look at a fight like this is almost, almost count the number of times that in a, in a little flurry inside or outside does one or the other guy take advantage. Both of them are very similar in aggressiveness. Maybe that little flurry there you give to Mario Martinez right now. And then you, just as you, as you say that, you Beautiful. see the fellow from Ghana is trying to fight back off the ropes. The rope's very loose here. Beautiful. Now Zuma Nelson calls Martinez into him. And Carlos Padilla says, hey, get off the ropes. I think uh, Mario Martinez is giving uh, Azuma Nelson all he wants. A low blow that time. No damage done at all. Zuma Nelson uh, does have radar on that left hand of his. When he lets it go, he does score with it. Right hand got off that time, and he bounced that back of Mario Martinez. Martinez, uh, you, know, you want to say, is more the brawler style of fighter. And uh, Nelson, uh, the more classic boxer, uh, Nelson uh, really does a nice job getting the jab through, as you see it there. Although it was more pouring that time than the crisp jab he's had before. And then he unloads the right hand, and he seems to, oh, that's a slip. There will be no knockdown. Both corners have used a lot of water in the corners, and the, the ring is kind of slippery out there. And the bell finally ends round number five. Again, this is scheduled for 12 as we come to the corner of Azuma Nelson. Let's go, man. Let's go now. Okay? Let's go now. Happy work. No worry for nothing. You fresh, okay? This double jab like Martina. Let's go. Jose hey, Martin doing a lot of the yelling in the corner of uh, Azuma Nelson. Uh, let's see the replay here. 
And you can see the slip. Uh, Zuma Nelson, his right foot just seemed to give away underneath him. And here it is again. You see, oh, he stepped on the foot of, uh, of uh, Mario Martinez. That's why it gave away. And Mario just backing up. So uh, Carlos Padilla right on the spot there to make the call if uh, it was no knockdown. That was probably the best uh, round of the fight for Azuma Nelson. Stay there, stay there. And here we go with round number six, approaching the mid portion of this fight. Again, it's Azuma Nelson in the leopard skin trunks. Mario Martinez in the black trunks. Martinez was in the process of looking like he was getting to do something in round five, and Nelson, as he did in round number four, kind of stole the round away from him in the late going of the round. Chris, little right hand to throw and tag the jaw of Azuma Nelson that time. Tries to score with the uppercut, but to no avail. Padilla has to separate the two fighters. Azuma seems like he wants to toy with this guy, but uh, this guy is no <laughs> nobody to toy with as he pours in himself and backs Azuma Nelson up against the ropes. Now Nelson comes out throwing some punches. Let's go, let's go. Both guys scoring uh, some punches in there. And this is what Martinez, not quite as, as good as this in most rounds, has been doing the scoring in the early portion, and then Azuma Nelson counter punches off the ropes and does an excellent job of it, the later going in the round, and is stealing at least the last couple of rounds, I believe. And, and to this point in this round, uh, you know, halfway through, you're gonna say Mario Martinez has won this. Keep an eye on the nice counter punching though, being done by Azuma Nelson. Nelson satisfied to just almost sit on the ropes there and let Mario Martinez come to him and counter punch him inside. And I must say, you know, after this midway portion that Martinez doesn't have the same sting he had the early going of the round. And the fellow from Ghana picking his shots to counter punch does an excellent job counter punching off the ropes. This is round six of a scheduled 12 round WBC Super Featherweight Championship fight. The world title on the line. This is Mario Martinez's second shot at this. They fought on the last day of February a year ago when in fact Zuma Nelson won this particular belt that he wears. Martinez again with more brawling tactics and uh, Azuma Nelson is a real classic boxer seems to be able to do almost as he pleases. If he wants to sit on the ropes, he'll sit on the ropes and counter punch. If he wants to come out and uh, box in the middle of the ring like he is now, he'll do that. There's the bell ending the sixth round. Let's go on, stay, stay, stay busy, busy, okay? Sound busy. Are you free? That's all right, everything all right? Let's go, let's go, baby, let's go. The trouble with this fight uh, and why sometimes it can be disparity in scoring is I've got like the first round, the third round, and the sixth round, almost dead even rounds, and it depends on how a given judge sees that. And then for the second, the fourth, and the, definitely the fifth round in favor of Nelson. But uh, Nelson, the only decisive round he's had in the fight is the fifth round. This could be a closer fight than what I'm uh, describing to you because of the uh, uh, way a different judge sees this. He's not decisively winning the rounds. As you take a look at the replay, you see him, this was in the early portion, and they exchanged punches, so how do you score that? You give that to, to Martinez and Nelson. I scored the round even again. A lot of judges are afraid to score an even round, but the thing is even, it's even, and that's the way I see it. I don't know how you people feel at home. You can uh, certainly judge and, as well as I can, uh, and, uh, and I can add to helping you judge by giving you the description of how heavy some of these punches are. And they seem to be about even to me. 
Nelson's people have better get a flyer underneath him. And Mario Martinez has come to lift this title and uh, might be on his way to doing it. Of course, right now, uh, Azuma Nelson looks mighty fine. As long as he doubles with that jab and looks for the shot with the right hand, he has more hand speed uh, than has Martinez. Uh, but Martinez isn't letting that bother him too much. This is round seven. And the leopard skin trunks and shoes is Azuma Nelson. And the black with the gold trim is Mario Martinez from Guadalajara, Mexico. Eddie Mathus, Jose Martin doing a nice job in the corner of Nelson. Nacho Silver in the other corner. I suppose the heavier blows uh, in the entire contest have been landed by Azuma Nelson, as you saw there a little while ago. That time, uh, Martinez got a pretty good shot in himself. Both of these fellas are in excellent shape. Both have been able to absorb punches. Neither fighter has been down. Nice crisp left jab taken on the chin that time of Martinez. good pace to this fight too we're in the seventh round and the guys have to stop throwing punches for very long portions of any round in this fight both guys have plenty of bounce in their legs both finely conditioned athletes for this fight Azuma, of course, the more flashy of the two fighters. Martinez seems to be happy to just plod in, come in. Now, that uh, was a nice bit of counter-punching by Azuma Nelson there, who, in spite of the fact that Martinez is more aggressive right now, Nelson is doing the scoring with a nice job and the hand speed and doing a great job of counter-punching Martinez coming in at him. See Martinez come in with a double jab that time, but unable to score. Let's go, Tom. Oh. All right, the bell ends round seven. So much. In the corner of Azuma Nelson, let's listen. You want to use kind of punches, nothing happens. You understand what I'm saying? I need to work hard, Tom. I need to work hard, OK? The fight is too fucking close. close. Yes, yeah, close. Yeah, you have to put pressure. It's close. Pressure, pressure, pressure. You don't know how to do nothing, so that's why you call a fight to tell You understand? Busy, busy all the time, busy. Hello. Aggressive. Now it's coming, now it's coming good, 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 Brisa. Let's go. This man is tight, you know, he's open the mouth all the time. It's too tight. Across the way now to Mario Martinez's corner. This is round number eight, the scheduled 12 round WBC Super Featherweight Championship bout. Azuma Nelson fighting in Accra in Ghana in Africa and the leopard skin trunks and Mario Martinez out of Guadalajara, Mexico in the black trunks. It's a fairly even fight. Azuma Nelson slightly out in front in the fight, but a good fight, a good championship fight. Both fellas very busy. You heard the expression of concern in the corner of Azuma Nelson in between rounds that, hey, this fight is too darn close, guy. You better, uh, you know, fight the entire three minutes of each round here and be sure that your round's a little bit more decisive. And I would certainly have to agree with that thinking in the corner of Azuma Nelson. On the other hand, I think Mario Martinez is uh, doing a real nice job. time they fought it with the full 12 rounds that was a close decision but Nelson had a lot more distractions in that fight leading up to it his wife was uh, not feeling well and a few other personal distractions and, and this fight when Eddie Bafus told me that 
Azuma Nelson would be really ready, not only physically, which obviously both fighters are physically ready for this fight. Nice job now by the fellow from Ghana doing some heavy scoring. Two heads came together there, and you heard uh, Carlos Padilla say, watch the heads. The heads bang together there now. Let's go, baby, let's go! That was a real decisive flurry for Azuma Nelson. Nice shots being landed. Again, neither fighter has been down. We had a slip in the back of the fourth round, third or fourth round, when Azuma stepped on the foot of Mario Martinez, and as Martinez was dragging away, it to tumble down Azuma. But uh, the experience of Carlos Padilla did not miss that, and it had no effect in the scoring of the round. This is round eight, as you see, inside of a minute to go. This has been more, uh, much more uh, decisive and easier round to score so far for Azuma Nelson. And that's perhaps because he fought the entire three minutes instead of just grabbing the last minute of the round that he's done in some other rounds of the fight. In spite of the fact that Nelson is scoring the uppercuts, scoring the right hands, Martinez continues to throw leather, but it just doesn't seem to land as heavy as the ones landed by Azuma Nelson. These guys are really working hard, though. Closing seconds of the eighth round. There was a strong round for Azuma Nelson. He fought the entire three minutes of that round. Take a look here, you see, if you were looking for a decisive round, as all of us have been looking for, you see in that flurry that uh, certainly Azuma Nelson uh, made that flurry very decisive. And I was talking in the corner to Eddie Mafus here for a couple of seconds in between rounds. I said, Eddie, you know, he's going to keep doing this throughout the fight because, uh, you know, I, I at now at least have a spread of five points with Nelson out in front. But you don't know how the judges uh, might score. Is again only an indication to you folks what I see. And it really has nothing to do with the official scoring. We're usually fairly close. But uh, uh, the important thing is, is how these judges see these very, very even rounds. And one judge may see it one way and one judge may see it another way and that wipes out my five uh, five point difference that I have in the fight right now in favor of Azuma Nelson so Azuma needs to finish strong in round number 9, 10, 11 and 12 to uh, be sure he's going to win this fight and of course uh, Mario Martinez wants to rob this thing from Azuma Nelson and he's going to have to uh, uh, at least land more blows I don't think he can get much more aggressive than he's been in the fight he certainly showed me plenty of aggressiveness uh, but uh, he's going to land some punches now His punches just don't seem to take a toll on Azuma Nelson Nelson's very busy with the trunk of his body he can duck he can pull a chin in he can slip punches it, uh, just nothing that uh, Mario Martinez throws seems to take an effect that hasn't frustrated Martinez. You see Martinez has probably thrown seven or eight punches in the last 15 seconds here, and nothing's landed. Where in that three or four punch combination, some of the stuff is getting to the face and head of the champion. Nelson in the last round, the eighth round, really began to catch up with Martinez. And in this round, he's catching up with him again. Some heavy shots landed in that last exchange. Martinez uh, doesn't seem to want to go, which again shows the great conditioning.
yet. Neither fighter has been down in the fight. And they've both been working this hard throughout the fight. But it's the superior hand speed of Azuma Nelson that is eventually now beginning to really show the superiority of his ability over Mario Martinez. Martinez punches are not anywhere near as crisp as are the shots landed by Azuma Nelson. And while Azuma just is sitting on the ropes in the corner now, and Mario is trying to work, nothing is happening. See the time remaining now in this, the ninth round of the fight. So time is running out for Mario. All right, here we go. Round number 10, scheduled for 12, don't forget. Because at stake is the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. The fight, a very difficult fight to score through the first half of the fight. And then Azuma Nelson began to take more command in the seventh, eighth, and certainly in the ninth round. We're in round number 10. Bob Sheridan here on the Mike Tyson Network. We're coming to you live from the Hilton Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. going in the round anyway. Azuma doing all the scoring here now. Although, as I say that, a right hand lands by Martinez and has no effect. Azuma shakes it off and continues down to really put some leather to the face of uh, Mario Martinez. Again, uh, indicative of the fact that Martinez has done a tremendous job training for this fight, as has, of course, Azuma Nelson. Uh, guys are in tremendous shape and uh, neither one of them will go down. Martinez hasn't hit the champion hard enough to make him go down, but Azuma's certainly hit the challenger enough times with some pretty good shots that he should be softening up enough to start to go soon. But again, the first time they fought it was a 12-round decision for Azuma Nelson, and the way this thing is progressing right now, it could well be another 12-round battle. Mario Martinez took the fight to Azuma Nelson through the first six rounds, and it wasn't until the seventh round that Nelson really began to establish himself as in control of this fight. And I thought that, uh, although, as you see, Nelson doing a great job counter-punching, he almost sets him up with that uh, side of his forearm and then lands the right hand. I'm surprised Carlos Padilla didn't say anything about it. Now he, now he does. Just as I say that, Padilla had the same feeling uh, I had. Padilla obviously saw that and uh, didn't choose to interrupt the flow of the fight, which is a sign of a good referee as well. And again, it's Nelson getting the best of this glory. It's out of five seconds now remaining in the tenth round. All right, round Round number 11 for the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World. Actually, it's the Super Featherweight Championship of the World. And we'll make that clear. That's the division that is not over 130 pounds. And Azuma Nelson, the champion, doing a pretty good job. The champ decked out in his uh, cream leopard skin uh, trunks and has the same uh, sort of uh, socks on and uh, shoes. So he certainly... Uh, Proud to be from Africa, I guess you'd have to say. And Mario Martinez, on the other hand, proud to be from Guadalajara, Mexico, and doing his countrymen proud because he's making a nice attempt at trying to lift this title from Azuma Nelson. Thus far, I have Nelson now comfortably out in front in the fight after, I wouldn't call it a shaky start, but I certainly would have to say that the uh, 
Start wasn't a fast start for Azuma Nelson, although he held his own as Mario Martinez threw everything he could possibly try to throw at him. And Azuma Nelson was able to do a nice job defensively and a nice job counter punching. And he's followed up really controlling seven, eight, nine, and ten. see Martinez's game and Martinez tries to score he tries to come in he tries to be aggressive but he's not able to land the punches and the amount of punches and certainly with the velocity of power that uh, Azuma Nelson has when he does land his punches that's the midway point in the 11th round and again, the championship fights at 12 rounds. The WBC, that is. The Mike Tyson, Frank Bruno fight coming up. That will be fought under WBC rules, thus it will be a 12-round fight. And that's what the crowd here at the Hilton Hotel is really here to see. Although there's plenty of people around the world watching this that uh, are perhaps enjoying watching a couple of the smaller fellas in action. Zuma Nelson, Mario Martinez. All of the many countries that I know are watching in Africa. We welcome you to the Mike Tyson Network. We're glad that you can be with us. Mike Tyson, the first heavyweight champion of the world to have his own television network an association here in Las Vegas, Nevada with the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel. It's a great marriage. And I'm sure that Mike will continue to do the promotion of his uh, foreign network uh, throughout the course of his career. All right, coming up to the closing seconds now of round 11, and the bell is really close to that point. And when I say fairly close as we go to the 12th round, a lot of the early rounds were, I mean, really could have gone either way, and it just depends on the judges as to how those went. But I, I feel confident that Azuma Nelson is comfortably out in front. And as I say that, down he goes. Counts up to three, four, and five, and six. That's the first knockdown in the fight. It's up to seven. He has to take the standing eight count. So Martinez is down for the first time in the fight, and Nelson coming in and would like to put him down again. However, Mario Martinez showing the courage of the challenge that he's made throughout the night. Doesn't like the fact that he went down. And uh, Nelson showing that he has a great deal of confidence now after dumping Mario Martinez. He'd like to finish up and put him down again. Remember, there's no free knockdown rule in the WBC, so it's really to the discretion should he go a couple of more times of Carlos Padilla. And in spite of the fact it was one of those flash knockdowns, uh, Mario Martinez. Oh, he's hit now. He's hurt bad. And it's a good thing that Carlos Padilla stopped in because Mario Martinez is out on his feet. A nice finish for Azuma Nelson. That will be scored as a 12th round TKO win. But had the referee Carlos Padilla elected to let Nelson hit him three or four more times in the head, he would have gone down and he would have been counted out. So a big finish for Azuma Nelson. Strong finish for Azuma.